Well, hello there, spider Dash here. I think that is to no one's surprise that I like Spider-Man. Maybe a bit too much. And honestly, who could help it? Spider-Man is such an amazing character. Having him as a figure that you can look up to and learning life lessons was a great experience for most of us. I think that most people that are watching this video grew up with Spidey. And watching him go through the tortuous experience of high school meant everything to us. And then Spider-Man grew up, as well as all of us. Eventually, Spider-Man got married with the love of his life, something that most of us look up to. Every day I wake up, then I start to break up, lonely as a man without love. And then at some point, something happened. Spider-Man went from being a married man working as a teacher to being single, unemployed and living with his mom. And that was in the comics, what about the other media? In the animated series from the 90s, Peter was in college. And before its cancellation, it was heavily implied that he had intentions of marrying Mary Jane. And then, uh, we will skip you too. <laughs> A spectacular Spider-Man took Peter back to his high school years. But instead of using this as means of making Spider-Man look young just for the sake of making him an adolescent again, it was well employed and it was nice to see him grow again. But then we have these two abominations that every two seconds remind us that Peter is an adolescent full of hormones, incapable of shutting his mouth. And then what about the most important media? The movies. In the first Raimi film, he was in high school just like one third of the entire movie. And it was enough time to understand who Peter was, his struggles, his identity, and then the next two movies, he was pretty much an adult. In The Amazing Spider-Man he was in high school the complete first movie, and the MCU Spider-Man was in high school the whole trilogy. So why is it that every time that we get to see a new Spider-Man franchise on the big screen, or in the small screen, he gets progressively younger? Why this matters? Well, be sure to stay until the end to understand the answer. But before starting the video, give me a like, be sure to click the subscribe button and leave your thoughts about this topic in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and with that out of the way, let's begin! I think that in order to understand why Spider-Man should grow up, it's important to understand why Peter Parker, starring as a young hero, matters. And this is something that it has been said enough to the point that I'll be just repeating words. But I'll try to be as fast as possible in this point, because without it, the video wouldn't be complete. Peter Parker starts as a young man because he was supposed to represent the average comic reader. When The Amazing Fantasy number 15 was released, in that time, young superheroes didn't exist. They could only aspire to be a sidekick. So having a hero that was the same age as the comic book readers, and not only that, but him having the same problems as the rest of us, like being bullied at school, not having any luck with girls, or being poor, meant everything to people that was young when they started reading the character. So young Peter Parker matters because he represents all of us who grew up poor, that got bullied at school, because we went from feeling lonely to having someone that not only told us that we weren't alone, but that we could fight, that we can get up, face our demons and become better in the process. But unlike Spidey, we are limited by the physical rules of our universe, which means that we will eventually get old, die and rot, while most probably Spider-Man will still be in his early 20s in the comics. But as I mentioned, Peter did get old, and did get married. And at some point he even got a daughter, but it was kidnapped by the Green Goblin and for some reason Peter just forgot about it. Uh, comics are complicated, okay? Speaking about comics, I have to tell you a secret. I stopped reading comics not too long ago. The reason? Comics suck. I used to be the edge lord that talks that people enjoying movies was wrong, because they never read the comics. My idea was that the source material was always better because it was the original. Why is it that our comic book fans are like that? But at some point, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was released, and I was captivated by something that was never done before, making Peter Parker an old man. And to my surprise, it was easier to see myself in that version of Spider-Man than the clown that we had in the comics. And I was more interested in seeing an older version of Peter Parker 
and I wasn't even old by that point. Spider-Man PS4 showed us what Peter can be if he gets a little bit older, more experienced. That aging him a little doesn't make him less relatable, rather the complete opposite. So why is it that while other media are letting Peter Parker grow, the source material doesn't let him? Well, in order to understand that, we need to learn the comic book way to do things. If something gets popular, keep doing it until you can't milk that cow anymore. Why being original and risky when you can keep doing what sells? Why bother in the hard work that takes making new comics when you can just do what it has been done, knowing that people will buy it anyways? Let me give you an example. I was going to save this for another video about Batman that I have in mind, but I'll use it here because it helps my point. Why is it that Batman can be defeated by someone as insignificant as Two-Face, Bane or Scarecrow that are just merely humans, while at the same time being able to defeat Superman, the entire Justice League and basically anyone that he puts his mind to? Because that is what sells these days. Back in the day, Batman could be defeated by pretty much any villain. But nowadays, Batman has ascended to a god level because he is the most popular character. It is easier to keep making stories of Batman defeating the entire Justice League or even more powerful characters than working on a story that shows the human side of Batman. Because that is what sells. People will read those stories and treat them as religion because that is the logic. It doesn't matter if pretty much Batman is a human, and I'm not undermining Batman. I love Batman because he's a human, because he pushes his limits time and time again to defeat villains like Bane or outsmart the Riddler, not because he can defeat the Justice League and Darkseid with one finger. Every bit of tension in a Batman comic is shattered when you remember that with enough prep time he can bend the universe to his will. And well, what has any of that anything to do with Spider-Man? A lot, let me tell you. In the early 2000s, the first Raimi movie was released. At that point, Spider-Man was already married in the comics. And while most people was introduced to the character for the first time, Marvel was smart enough to not undo this. And instead, they created a complete new universe for new readers, Ultimate Spider-Man. And by far, this was the best decision. But when Spider-Man 3 was released, they faced this problem again. New readers were on the horizon, and making an ultimate, ultimate Spider-Man was not a great idea this time. So, they did something that haunts Spider-Man even to these days. After the events of Civil War, Aunt May gets shot. And instead of letting Aunt May die, Marvel made Spider-Man do a deal with the devil and undo his marriage, in exchange of saving Aunt May's life. And if you think that I'm being a bit too cynical, remember that in the video game Spider-Man PS4, Peter lets Aunt May die to save the entire city. And that wasn't even Peter's fault. In the comics, no one told Peter to side with Tony, and no one told Peter to go against Tony and side with Captain America. He preferred to be a kid a little longer and live with his mom again, instead of facing the consequences of his actions. Anyway. This will start an ugly tendency on Marvel, where every time that a new movie gets released, they feel the need to also reset the comics, because seeing a big number might intimidate plausible readers. I'm not going to gatekeep who reads comics. I know that start to read comics is intimidating because you don't know where to start. And while this might get fixed with a YouTube search, I think that Marvel could do a better job at this, making easier to get the first and most essential issues of Spider-Man comics instead of resetting the whole thing time and time again. Recently, the Amazing Spider-Man comics got to start from the first issue again, and the things that they did with the character are just awful. They made Peter Parker steal from the Fantastic Four broke all his relationships with friends and even with Aunt May. And after him and MJ coming back together again, now Peter and MJ broke up and MJ has children with another dude. Apparently. Why is it that even when other characters get to grow, Peter Parker still behaves like a child? As I said, that's how comics work these days. Why change the status quo? Not too long ago, Dr. Octopus took control of Peter's body, and it was a great idea, and a great story, but fans didn't like that, so they changed that back as soon as they could, what leads me to my next point. I'm not the first to point out that the Spider-Man fandom sucks sometimes, and maybe we deserve less. 
Sometimes some of us are willing to attack each other just because we like a different version of Spider-Man. And even when I'm pretty sure that some of us are willing to let Peter Parker go and accept new ideas, it's not like that for the most part. Most fans are terrified of letting Peter Parker go, which translates to Marvel also not letting him grow. It's like at some point we got stuck, maybe the reason is as simple as Spider-Man fans and Marvel are afraid of doing different things that the ones already established, because as well as Spider-Man we can't grow up. And well, it's not like Marvel can't grow. I think that the reason is more obvious, changing the status quo might result in gaining less money. The reason why things work like that as well is that by keeping Spider-Man as a young hero, it's easier to sell merchandise, because why would you change something that is making you more money than the average person could imagine? Why would you want to change that? Apparently it's all good for everyone, so why bother? Well, maybe on the short term things will work out, but on the long term there will be consequences. Like what? Well, let me tell you. What do you think that will happen if we see the same story over and over again? I'll never talk that I say this, but I'm even more excited for seeing what comes next for Tom Holland. I'm more excited to see this Spider-Man grow than anything that happens in the comics. But let's say that for some reason we don't get a fourth Tom Holland movie. And then we go back to watching Spider-Man in high school. Do people really will want to see that again for a fourth time? Spider-Man will eventually become irrelevant, but this is just making the process faster. If Marvel wants a young Spider-Man, Miles is there, they can use him to keep telling stories about Spider-Man in high school. But for the love of God, get Peter and MJ back together. Let Spider-Man have a family. Grow up. Marvel already did this once. And that story was good, it shows us the distance that Peter is willing to go to protect his family. So they are totally capable of doing this in the main universe. We as fans can also contribute to this. Stop fighting about which Spider-Man is the best and maybe letting go Peter Parker if they want to tell a different story. The thing that baffles me the most is that this time maybe we have to grow up as fans first before Spider-Man does. A shout out to TFA Studios, Resident Evil Player, The Notorious ALE, Marvel 3K, Cashman Jedi, Shai Was Here, Foxcraft, AJ Gonzalez, Kyle Daniel, and Phoenix Explains. If you want a shout out in the next video, give me a like, click the subscribe button, and leave your opinion on the topic in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and bye bye.